When Tom and Jackie had made it up into the keep, Jerks had been sleeping soundly. The remnants of the trimming, as they called it, they strewn about the place and were in the process of getting cleaned up. The dragon had about half the greeting hall to himself, the other half being dominated by tied up prisoners currently under guard by Kakashian Heron. They had exchanged greetings, and Tom gave the prisoners a quick once over. They had quite a few, a quick head count coming to nine total, Kakashi explaining they had another three in the infirmary. They had all looked at Tom with a mix of confusion and fear. Tom guessed they might recognize the odd weapons he was carrying, and they were certainly acquainted with what they could do. At least two of them had caught some lead shot, one of them in the face which looked rather nasty. He made a note to tell the healers those pellets needed to be removed if they were to live. He had no clue how quickly lead poisoning would set in, but it couldn't take long. It hadn't taken long before a chook had shown up, the captain likely having been informed Tom had returned. So, how's this drool doing? She'll live. Get anything useful out of this lot yet? Tom replied, gesturing around at the crowd of prisoners, who in turn glanced around at each other. Nothing useful, no. They have been quite forthcoming with what they know, which is little to nothing. All hired within a few weeks for this job from various places, mostly smaller towns and villages strewn around the capital or en route here. Think they are lying? Tom said rather pointedly, while looking around at them. Maybe, maybe not, Rachuk replied, looking around at the prisoners as well. Tom felt rather conflicted, looking at the brigands before him. They were a rather varied lot. Some had fine-looking armour. One who looked no older than poor foe, who was wearing only simple and rather ragged-looking leather clothing. Maybe the kid had been desperate. The few stories they had gotten out of Ray certainly made it sound like she wasn't alone in her situation. Then again, they knew what they were doing. Of course they did. They were organised and following orders. They felt a lot more like a battle than a robbery to him, that was for sure. And technically, he guessed they might be considered mercenaries. So were they prisoners of war? Or common criminals? What were they going to do with them all? Were they just going off the edge? He didn't even know if this was considered treason or not. Tom heard a grunt and a rattle of plates from the door to the stairs. Turned to watch Ray struggle with the door. Jackie already trotting over to hold the door for her. Ray walked past with a, thank you. As Jackie looked down into the pot she was carrying, looking less than pleased. Dear God, is that dinner? No, no, this is for the nasty ones. Still, dinner won't be much today, but tomorrow... Ray replied with a convincing nod and a smile. She quickly went to start ladling out food into the plates and started handing them out. Rachel cleared his throat and gestured for Tom to follow him as he started walking towards the stairs, going up to the next level. Tom followed, looking to Jackie, who gestured for him to just go with Rachel as she started helping Ray. Tom just nodded, following the captain up into the library and closing the door behind himself. So, think they're lying? Maybe. They're all very similar stories, Rachel replied, but believable ones. They claim to have had one veteran officer who served with Rachel, and he's dead by her hand down below. The Red had one too. She's gone as well, shot down by Sapphire. Well, isn't that convenient, Tom sighed. Adriel killed her own captain, or whatever you would call him. Quite. He was one of the two that got sprayed with acid down there. We had to scoop him off the ground. The other one was a woman, apparently. So, we might just have a drill left unless some of this lot is lying. I think so, yes. But if I'm being honest, I think she has a lot to say. Like who hired her? Tom replied with a sigh. I don't buy her story of just coming here for the money. All these people hired that quickly, and by the sounds of it, no questions asked. That sounds like this is not something she does in the regular. Unless the crews are lying, this was their first raid with her. A few admitted this wasn't their first wrong at something like this. They even sounded proud of it, the captain said, sounding more despairing than anything else. I could believe that. Some of that equipment doesn't look cheap. Some of those people must have been expensive to hire. Unless they were swayed by the possible prize. Or that, Tom relented. They certainly come from all over. Quite a few far off accents too. But I guess people can come from far and wide to towns near the capital. No keep dwellers though. Not even inner keys by the sounds of it. Which you'll get it, sounding rather thoughtful. Guess it would leave a bad taste in their mouth if they understood what this would mean for a regular keep. Well, a drill did sound like she rather dislikes people who live in keeps. Apparently someone kicked her out right before winter once. That would be a death sentence for a dragonette in some cases. I guess it would be hard even on a dragon, Rachel replied, clearly not pleased with that either. So we have no clue if they were hired or just decided to have a go at this, Tom sighed, pulling at his hair in frustration. I guess we'll have to see what Fenke can manage, but by the sounds of it she's spent, the captain replied with a sigh, sounding no more pleased with the situation. Spent? I thought she couldn't really use it yet, Tom asked, looking back to her choke. 
Well, apparently she figured that part out. Made Sapphire salute for a few minutes. Okay, that's... quite scary. And useful, the captain replied with a knowing nod. The Major apparently advised training on one of the prisoners. They'll be starting with that tomorrow, first light. I see. So when they get it to work, they go and try it on a drill? Sounds like a better plan than just winging it, Tom admitted. Where is she now? I think she's sleeping for now. Maybe she's still in Sash room. The Major had a talk with her. Apparently he knows a thing or two about this stuff. Well, at least we have an expert. Can we trust him with all this? As you said, he's the expert. But I get the feeling he will find out by himself otherwise. Fantastic, Tom replied sarcastically. What are we going to do with that lot up there? We can't keep them around. No, I intend to hand them over to the Inquisition when they get here. Richard replied with what Tom swore looked like an evil glint in his eye. I think you'll be doing a favor by sending them over the edge there. Perhaps, but it would send quite the message. We look like we are under inquisitorial protection. Which we kind of are. Yes, but we can't really go saying that aloud now, can we? I guess not quite. Not actually sure about that. We were told to pretend like nothing has happened, Tom. Matruga replied, not seeming very impressed with him. Fair enough. How long is that, though? Might be weeks. I doubt it. I think a week is generous. I say we lock them up in one of the sheds. They know they can't run. And we'll feed them some crappy food and plenty of water so they don't feel they need to break out. Then we hand them off. Just don't tell them what their fate will be. So we are sending them back home on the next trader to face justice at the capital. I'm willing to bet they will think they can just escape from the trader. You sly little bastard. What is it with you today? You seem so soft. Hell no. I like it. Should be very effective. They will face justice and we don't have to put down a kid that might have gone suckered into this. The young guy in the rags up there? Richard asked with a slight head tilt. He knew what he was in for. Give him a few years, he would probably have ended up dead or a hardened killer. Fengi and Ray didn't. Fengi and Ray didn't agree to go murder innocent people for money. Richard snapped back at him. There's some damn difference between a common criminal forced to steal food and a killer willing to sell lives for money. No, no, I get it. I already said I agreed. Fuck it, who knows? Inquisition might decide the kid is useful or something. I highly doubt that. Tom just sighed, looking at the captain. Of course he was right, but the kid upstairs can be much more than teen. No one was smart enough to figure shit like this out as a teen. Come on, let's get to moving those guys. And don't want them hearing more than I already know. Actually, it might be best to send them in the Inquisition just for that alone. See? Two birds, one stone. I guess some sayings stay the same. The following day, things were rather strange at the keep. Saf had this sense of being behind, yet they had to take their time. They were messing with magic they really didn't quite understand, yet they needed to find some answers. Hence why they were currently in the kitchen with a prisoner lashed to a chair, looking around at them curiously. Well, it's the closest we are going to get. I would rather not let you try this on me. I have some secrets to hide, even from you, Saf shrugged, giving the unlucky guy a slap in the back. They had come up with a brilliant plan to just keep Saf and Jinora behind him for now, with Essie ready to keep his eyes pointing forwards if necessary. No reason to let him know more than needed, just in case the Inquisition or someone else got their claws on him in the end. But it still feels wrong. You sure I won't hurt him? Fengi asked, looking at her pleadingly. Why are you suddenly concerned about that now? Seth thought to herself, looking at Fengi with an unamused expression. No, the effects are not permanent. I've certainly never heard of that being the case. You are not a mind reader. Then Gossa replied, no book already open. Now, please, I don't want to leave Mother for too long. Sorry, thanks for just being here, I guess, Finger replied, still not sounding convinced before looking down at the prisoner. They moved him into the kitchen and sat him down at the large work table, so they would get a bit of privacy with him. For his part, he'd been promised better food in addition to better treatment if he cooperated, which had apparently been sufficient for this guy. Initial questioning had revealed that he didn't know much, if he was telling them the truth, but he was a guy Fengi didn't know and could ask just about anything and not know the answer, so a perfect subject to train on. That and the Major had rather hinted at this being the right way to go about this, not to mention giving his consent. Okay, so I'm going to ask you some questions. You might feel a bit weird, and then you should answer willingly or not. And try to resist. This is the strangest interrogation I've ever been in, the guy replied, looking up at her, then down to his restraints before sighing. Have you tried many before? Then Gossip questioned, looking ready to write the answer down. Is that part of the try to resist part? No. Then yeah, I've had a few. Excellent. Should be a bit harder to break then, then Costa replied, sounding quite chipper. Oh, to the contrary, I've learned it's easier to just spill the beans, 
he said with a grin on his face, stopping Linkosa for a bit. Then, why has no one killed you yet? She asked, not seeming able to make heads or tails of it. Saf had to admit, he didn't sound like he would last very long. Because I tell them that, I'll just spill the beans. They don't tell me shit. Hey, that's pretty smart, Fingy admitted, looking at the others. Saf just sighed at the conclusion they weren't getting anything useful out of this guy, even by accident. Why did we pick this guy again? Saf felt she had to ask, looking around at the others. Because he was willing to play catch, Inkosa sighed, shoulders sagging. Fucking hell. Okay, try to resist now, Fingy said before kneeling in front of the increasingly confused looking prisoner. Much as that seemed hard to believe. Please, I beg of you, just tell me what I want to know, Fingy pleaded, ears dangling and pupils nearly going round. Okay, magic, Saf whispered into Genoa's ear, pointing to Fengi as she held the sweet in her hands like a treat for a pet. Genoa seemed more interested in the candy, having been allowed to get a lick before they started. She had pretty quickly grasped that using magic meant getting another lick of the candy when they had been training and experimenting. The tricky part was getting her to do it for long enough and on the right person on command. Saf had to admit this seemed a little wrong doing it like this, but it was effective. And it wasn't that far from giving her some other kind of reward for being a good girl. Genoa let out a happy little shriek before reaching a hand out towards Fingy, her eyes turning pale white and starting to glow. The fuck is wrong with you people? The prisoner had let out at the sight of Fingy pleading, pulling back against his restraints. Oh, she's just special, Saf replied with a smile, looking at Fengi as she let Genoa get in the lick, eyes still glowing. This feels weird, Fingy replied, looking down at her hands and studying them. It tingles, a lot. I think you need to ask him again, Linkosa added, pointing at the prison with her pencil. Oh, right. Please, sir, just tell me what I want to know. Of course, ma'am. What is it? Did you feel anything? Linkosa asked, looking at the prisoner, who just returned her gaze, not saying a word. She just let out a deep breath, sounding more than a little irritated, and looking back to Fengi. Maybe you should try asking him. Oh, right. Feel anything? Nah, not really. Wait, he replied, before throwing his brow at the realisation. The hell? I guess that's something, Linkosa added, taking down a quick note. Okay, what's your name? Arrow. Okay, this is trippy. The guy seemingly unwillingly replied, as he tried to wiggle free of his restraints. The hell did you do to me? Okay, Arrow. How did you end up here? No, my name is Ar 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 Aravita, he finally let out. Looking like he was fighting every word he was saying, eyes wide. I'll just call you Arrow, Fairy replied, looking at him, seeming rather unsure of herself and talking in a careful tone. So, how did you get here? I got hired. I have a guy I... I don't want to tell you, Arrow finally stammered out, seeming to win his fight against her, breathing hard and looking around with wide eyes. The fuck is she? An enchantress, didn't you hear? Mingosa replied, looking to Denora, who had been denied further candy licks and was sitting in Saf's lap, looking grumpy. I guess you found a time frame of sorts. In better news, Fingy didn't fall over, Saf went, giving the kid a bounce in her good leg and nuzzing the taller snout gently. Very well done, Genora. You are such a good girl. She got rewarded by a happy smile and a giggle as Genora reached out to touch Saf's snout. Like you saluting, it lingers, Linkosta observed. I wonder if we can make that any longer. That was pretty awesome, wasn't it? Saf questioned, looking to Fengi, who just nodded, seeming deep in thought. Really damn awesome. Do you want to try again? She asked in a mean voice, not looking up. Just ask him if he really doesn't know anything. Fengi had done as instructed, with a simple question and a growing baby, they had gotten their confirmation. The guy knew fucking nothing. Not even what the target had been called, just that they were raiding a frontier key that was heavily defended. Linkosa had noted it all down and they had dragged the prisoner back off after letting him munch on some fresh bread and a bit of jerky, promising he would be getting a better dinner today. Saf had just stayed in the kitchen playing with Genora for a bit. They'll be heading out for a drill shortly anyway. Is she feeling tired at all? Then Kostra had asked, as she made it back into the kitchen after a short visit to the infirmary. No, not at all. Is that good or bad? I haven't the faintest clue. Maybe she can keep going forever. Then Kostra replied with a shrug. She'll get bored eventually, Saf chuckled, continuing to play with the kid. She did have a tendency to be distracted at times. Or that, then Costa relented, looking at the little kid. I can only imagine what she might one day be able to do. Might even boost your magic enough to rival a proper witch, Saf retorted. And without any nasty bargains too. Unless you can't pay in candy, Saf chuckled as Jinora perked up at the mention of candy. 
I think that's a decent trade, the gossip said with a soft smile, looking at the gear before straightening back up. Right then, there's work to be done. It had been a fairly long day in the end, yesterday. Tom had helped to move the prisoners to the rather chilly outdoor shed after he had secretly moved the quad bike and parked it behind another building. But Chuck and the others seemed to all agree that the core building would at least help keep their prisoners from doing anything stupid in the night. Even so, the building was put under guard, though only from the outside. They didn't want a few prisoners breaking free and taking a hostage for use in negotiations. Tom was quite sure by now that these people had already seen enough to constitute a serious security risk. What did it matter if the whole lot was going to get executed by the Inquisition anyway? Now it was morning though, and he was standing in the mostly empty and once again clean greeting hall looking at a sleeping dragon, rolled over onto his back with all four feet dangling in the air like the largest Great Dane ever. Fuck that's hilarious, Tom thought to himself, taking a few steps back and taking a picture before going up to Jarvis's head and giving the dragon a slight tap on the lower jaw. Wakey wakey sleepyhead, you doing okay? I was, what now? Jarvis questioned, as his eyes slowly blinked awake, the young dragon stretching slightly before wincing. Oh, gods, that hurts. Sorry. It's fine. Ah, oh, shit, the dragon groaned to reply, letting his head rest back on the ground again. But it fucking sucks. Well, if it helps, if I got burned like that, I'll be down for months. It's almost like I can feel the pain go away already, Jarvis groaned, moving his head just enough to look at Tom. Mum's pissed. Yep, Don replied, nodding in agreement. Real pissed. Anything you can do about that? Short of giving her what she wants? Don't think so. I always want to tell you not to give her anything just to spite her. Is that so? I did my damn best, okay? Everyone else seems damn happy, but no, not Glira. Glira thinks I've lost my edge. Glira thinks I'm a big softie just because I didn't let my friends get murdered. The amount of sarcasm the wounded dragon managed was honestly impressive to Tom. What about you? Heard you were happy with her. Jarex, is your mother in the habit of killing for fun? Sure, she'll call anything if she feels wants it. If she's allowed to, obviously. Jarex replied, perfectly bluntly. Right. So, she's been like that since before I was born. Don't bother. Tom didn't really know what to say to that, as he stood there scratching the back of his neck. The gun jammed again. Yeah, I noticed. Rodexi said it felt like it had some weaker shots here and there. Bad ammo. Not much we can do about that except try and be a bit more careful when loading. How did it do against the red? Marvellously. He had no idea what it was. And since we got him into a turning fight, even the few shots it got off were enough to scare him into a dive. From there I had him. I guess that counts as good enough then, Dom nodded, looking down the side of the stricken dragon. I know it might not feel like it, but damn if that wasn't a clean win. Last one wasn't painless either. Jarek seemed to sigh. But it was worth it this time too. No, it wasn't. Look, do you think it would be better in the future if I just let Glira have what she wants? She'll do more or less whatever for it, including taking the heads for you, Jax replied. If you're worried about her giving it away, don't worry. She'll pay even more to have the only one. I guess that's something. What do you want to do with the prisoners? Have I become your moral guide or something? No, but you're the only proper soldier around here with training that I trust properly. Oh, thanks, man, Jax replied, actually pulling out a bit of a smile as he thought. I would cut off the lot of them. They have seen too much, and the Inquisition will throw an epic fit if we let them get away. Rajik wants to hand them over. I guess maybe they might want to do their own interrogation. Such is the life of a brigand. Losing once might be enough. Doesn't that describe most fighting? Depends on the enemy, but yeah, I guess. Speaking of which, what's the black like? A real bitch. Another one? Jax joked, letting out the snigger which it sounded like he regretted shortly thereafter. Think they'll kill her off too? Your mother wants to hand her in for a bounty. Yeah, she told me. Really damn happy about that one, Jax replied, taking a breath and a second to think. Depends on what she knows. They might just put her back in the mines. Well, that's something, I guess. The Inquisition will take care of it. If Sav were here, she would be telling you not to worry about it, I'm sure. Jackie too, for that matter. Did she get to show off her kill? Yeah, she did. Big boss at that one. Yeah. A good few weeks or maybe a month in a maggot pit and he'll be a fine wall decoration. You didn't have a problem with that? With what? Having a dragon skull hang on the wall? Jerry's just strained his neck a bit more to look directly at Tom, tilting his head. Why is that? Glira has my granddad hanging in her cave back in the capital. 
You have your granddad's skull hanging over the fireplace back home? How did you know it was over the fireplace? Jarex asked, as he lowered his head back to lie on the floor with a sigh. Um, I didn't? Tom tried with a shrug. Ah, uh, fuck it. You should see it one day. Quite a nice place. Maybe one day I'll have a place just like it. Not that the keep sucks or anything, but I kind of wish I at least had a proper bed. Dragons have beds? Yeah. I mean, I'm a soldier and all, Jarex replied, back to laying on the sarcasm. So I have to learn to live and sleep wherever I need to. Ars just had a room back of the guild. Didn't see any bed. Was there straw on the floor? Yeah. Tom replied tentatively, not sure if that constituted a bed. I'm willing to bet he has a nice wooden platform under that. No cold stones. I think we could slap something like that together. That would be pretty sweet. Might have it made out of the planks you will use to fix your drill. That would be funny. I'll ask Cullinger. Sounds like a project he would actually like to work on. Oh, the wood guy? I guess. He seems a touch strange. I just think he liked it the way things were. Actually, speaking of other people, you've met Junior, right? Yeah, Jax replied, as if that was obvious, which Tom admitted it of course was. He and Redexia are getting along all right, aren't they? Seems so, them against the girls and all that. You know, he really likes anything military. I noticed. He's been helping me out when he has the time. I think you could maybe do a bit more for the kid on that front. I think he could use some cheering up with his dad and all. The old geezer didn't die on us, did he? No, but still. Junior is basically the adult in that situation. He needs to relax, too. Look at you, being all caring and everything. I'm not going to be doing much for a while, though. Any ideas? Maybe just a chat. Tell him stories. About my training? I think that would work. Or just stories you have heard. Might help pass the time. Sure, but he's damn busy, isn't he? I'll try and help with that part. I think we end a little respite for this. Until the Inquisition gets here. Until the Inquisition gets here, yes. To make it with a sigh. He was not looking forward to that. Oh, by the way, how are you planning on dealing with the pissed off unicorn? You know, after we dumped nearly a ton of meat out there. What? I can't believe we are actually doing this, Jackie chuckled. Sounding more excited than anything. Shh, she needs to concentrate, Essie reprimanded. As they all stood in a half circle around Fengi and Saf. She knew her currently residing in Saf's arms and taking another little nap. Now, remember, concise points and get what you want in one go. No need for subtlety here, Major added. He'd come up with what exactly to say to a drill, just to make sure that part was at least a little bit by the book. What is the point of this circus? A drill asked, looking at them with the one eye that could see them. Glimmer and the Major come up with the rather smart idea to have Idril look away from them, with Glimmer standing ready to prevent any unwanted movements, meaning they should be perfectly safe. You know, stop trying to act dumb, Saf died to herself, as she started trying to rouse Janora. Wakey wakey, there was Kenny to be had. And that seemed to do the trick as her eyes shot open, and started looking around for this magical candy. There we go, up you come, yes, it's candy time, Saf went with a nod getting Genoa to sit up in her arms before looking to Fenki. I think we might be ready to begin. So we weren't trying to horn first after all? Richard questioned, sounding cautiously hopeful that idea might still be on the table as he looked at Lincosta. Dakota and Apuma were still back at the keep with the Nook, leaving just the two Bismartis here for this. If it doesn't work, one thing at a time. We know this at least sort of works and it's free too, Lincosta replied unconvincingly as she paged through a book of hers. I did bring the powder we have left, and what well, we need to turn it into paint if we need it. Madril had at least shut up, and was instead just glaring at them now. Seth meeting the gaze of a massive eye. It was unmoving, unblinking, and clearly scrutinising them. Let's get this over with, she thought to herself, suddenly feeling quite a bit more uncomfortable. They had removed the mine, because it might just take a few of them with it if it came to that. It wasn't like it was needed now that Clara was at hand. Okay, Janora. See, Fengi? Magic, Saf went, holding up the candy. Janora quickly turning in her arms to look at Fengi, having very much so figured out what she was supposed to do by now. Fengi stepped forwards as Janora's eyes began to shine, Idril not moving a muscle, Glira leaning forwards and raising her foot just in case. Okay, let's try this, Fengi went, taking a step forward and kneeling in front of Idril. You will not harm my friends. You will tell us what we want to know, and do what I tell you. Might have overreached yourself there, Saf thought to herself. No, I will not, Idril sneered to reply, 
You think I've not been here before? Her voice sounded rather strained. I'm going to bet on it, Seth replied, stroking Janora and letting her have a few licks of the candy. Okay, Janora, we're going to try again. Okay. The child replied with a tilted head and a curious expression. Yes, again. Seth grinned as Janora let out a little shriek. Oh, you are so clever, aren't you? A short belly tickle later, Seth held up the candy again. Janora just bounced a little in Seth's arms before turning to Fengi, holding out her hand. Actually, Fen, I think it's a good idea if you hold her. Rachuk seemed rather worried at the idea, looking to the Major who in turn just shrugged, looking at a drill. Can't see the harm in that. She would want the child as a bargaining chip anyway. Nice way to fucking put it, Snaps said to herself, as she walked up to Fengi, handing the kid over. There we go, and the obligatory candy. Thanks, Fengi replied, letting Janora sit on one arm as she held the candy with the other. She turned to a drill and once again kneeled before her. Janora looking at touch confused. You will not harm my friends. You will tell us what we want to know, and do what I tell you. Janora didn't seem to get the insinuation this time around. Sav walking up and kneeling next to Fengi, taking the candy and holding it up. Magic. Magnix. Janora giggled as she reached for the candy. Sav pulled it back, tapping Fengi on the shoulder. Magic. Janora seemed to think for a second, before plucking her head down on Fengi's shoulder, eyes going bright as she reached for the candy with the other hand. Fengi clearly felt whatever it was happen as she repeated her phrase once more. A drill snout curled into a sneer before she tried to turn to face him, being rewarded with Glera forcing her head into the ground once again. Get that stupid little creep away from me, she roared out. Glera letting out a snarl in reply as the black dragon tried to wrench free. She knew starting to cry as she clung to Fengi, who in turn started to backpedal away. A drill tried lashing out with a foreleg, black claws reaching, heading straight for Saf and Fengi. Saf tried to yank Fengi away, who instead just hunkered down, protecting Jinora. The kid screamed in fear as she clutched Fengi, who was just curled up around her. Time slowed down for Saf as the clawed hand came towards them, stopping short of his target, a drill having reached the end of her reach. Then Fengi lit up like a glowant on a moonless night. Saf turned her head to look at Fengi, even the blue ribs on her back were glowing as she stood back up again, green light pouring from her eyes like Tom's flashlights, clearly visible even in the middle of the day. And she spoke in a disembodied voice that swore came as much from inside her head as from her ears. You dare harm what I saved? What are you? It did not sound like Fengi either. It was a deeper tone, yet still feminine, and it sounded pissed. I see. Thank you, Fengi. You come here, to my home, a forest under siege from the dark, and you dare attack those who defend it, inadequate though they may be. You force them to throw away my precious friends, those who I care for, just to take some trivial things you want like coins. I would rip you apart if I were there, but I can do this. I sentence you to servitude. Let these people do what they want with you. This one feels pure enough, possibly even kind-hearted. Hopefully they will work you to death, so you can repay some of what you cost me. And then Adriel screamed out in pain. Saf looking up to see Glera clearly struggling to keep the black dragon down, as wounds ripped and braces snapped like twigs. Everyone quickly turned and ran except for Saf, who tried her damnedest to move Fengi back. The young huntress just stood there though, as if glued in place, skin glowing and eyes still shining bright as she stared at the black dragon. Why won't you move? Fengi! 